Hey, welcome back. You know, I'm gonna take you kind of behind the scenes on my business on, well, I've been wanting to do this for a while. So if you wanna know all the different ways that you can potentially make money with a business, a lot of you guys ask questions on how you can get started, how you can evolve, how I do what I do, which I do a lot of things wrong, but we're gonna give you some insight, share some tips, give you some stuff to chew on that maybe you can take back, put a game plan together for kind of developing and turning your hobby into that part-time business maybe into that full-time career. So my YouTube channel is just one tiny little part of my business. It is not a full-time gig for me, although sometimes it does feel like it. So let's give you a little bit of a rundown, a little brief history of what my business is all about, how I got to where I am today, where I wanna go. And let's break down those revenue streams, the different ways that I bring in income to support my business, to pay the bills, to support my family and everything else. Now you hear the term low-hanging fruit a lot as well, which there is one revenue stream that I just really have not focused a whole lot on. I kind of have mixed feelings about it, although maybe I shouldn't, it's no big deal, probably in the grand scheme of things. I'm gonna tell you about that one too. So for those of you that didn't know, my name is Courtney Scott and I'm the founder of Goodworks Tractors. It's something I started as a hobby many, many years ago and kind of built it from that hobby into a part-time business while I had a full-time job. And then eventually I reached a breaking point at that full-time job and just turned in the papers and said, I'm giving it a go. And so some of you have always had that entrepreneurial spirit or that bug or that itch. And so for me, this is not my first business venture. I've had many, many business ventures that have mainly not succeeded, but have taught me a lot of valuable lessons. And I think a lot of you can relate, but I learned best by doing it, by actually giving it a go, seeing what happens, putting some money on the line and seeing if I can make it work. So things have finally come together with this business. And I just want to tell you all the different ways, some of them just kind of came out of nowhere, right? All the different ways that you can make money with a business, you know, and there's there's different formats, there's different methods to the madness. There could be things that work for you that don't work for me and vice versa. But if you don't know about them, you don't know what to try. So of course, with any business, you're primarily gonna sell a service or a good. That's gonna be the meat and potatoes of your business. And so for me, when I started out, I was selling used tractors. And so I bought and sold very nice, clean, low hour, John Deere Kubota tractors that were in the compact world, typically in the 10 to maybe $30,000 price range. Now I started off selling those locally just in the greater Kalamazoo area and then kind of maybe a couple hours away after that, did all of my advertising on Craigslist at the time and just kind of grew the business. It was just, it was a hobby, it was a fun hobby. I got to use a tractor and try to sell it and make some money and I just kind of repeated that cycle over and over. However, because of that, folks started to ask for attachments to go with their tractors, right? And I didn't have anything, you know, they would want to set a pallet forks or a box blade or a rototiller or a snow plow, just whatever you might want to use with a tractor. And so that led me to a second revenue stream, which was finding different distributors that sold tractor attachments or different manufacturers I could buy from directly. And so I started to be able to fill out Okay, so offer more than just a tractor, but be able to upsell and sell something else along with that tractor and increase my profitability. And so again, keep in mind, my main method of advertising at this point, probably seven, eight years ago, was all on Craigslist. And so eventually though, I built out a Facebook page and then you start to reach just naturally a larger swath of the country. And so it started to become more regional, you know, down into Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, maybe even in Kentucky, Pennsylvania, some other areas as well. And so it was just that natural progression of the word getting out there and expanding. And so then at one point, I started to have some folks ask if I would ship equipment to them, right? And I'd never done that. I'd never thought about it, but it got the wheels spinning in my head and it made perfect sense, right? I just had to figure out the numbers, figure out the cost. And that was to ship tractors. That was to ship attachments. And so I really started putting some pen to paper and seeing what I had to do, where I had to buy this equipment at on a price point, whether it's the used tractors or the new attachments, look at my competition to see what folks can buy it for in different areas of the country, and then see if I can still make money after including shipping in that price. And so I wanna pause for a moment and I wanna let you guys know that this isn't just a story about my business, but this is to give you guys stuff to chew on, right? You all have ideas. A lot of you guys wanna own your own business and it doesn't have to be tractors, it can be anything, but I started to see that the internet is the way to go, right? Local sales for me were not what I wanted to do. It was just a very limited market. You're relying on a lot smaller customer base and competing with all the other local dealers. But what I wanted to do was compete on a broad scale and offer something that most dealers can't do 
with a few exceptions, which is ship product right to somebody's house or right to a business or right to a freight terminal. And at that point, you're then offering convenience. You're not just offering a product, but you're, you're offering something intangible, which is getting that to the customer that's maybe in a remote country area or in an area that doesn't have any dealers around there or is out of the equipment. You're getting it right to them and it becomes more of a national scale. Okay, and so at this point, we've got tractors as a revenue stream and then we have attachments as a revenue stream. But now we're gonna add on YouTube as a revenue stream, which kind of came out of the blue for me. And so as business was progressing and emails were coming in and phone calls were coming in, there's a lot of terminology I realized that's specific to tractors that you wouldn't really know what it means unless you knew what a tractor was and all the components that go to it. And so after getting asked some of these questions dozens and dozens and dozens of times and me being a visual learner myself, I just kind of clicked and thought, well, why don't I make a few videos here, make videos, quick, quick clips about these commonly asked questions and maybe that can help out a lot of other folks that are out there looking and thinking about tractors, but it can also be a way that I can visually send a link to a customer that's talking to me. I can send it right back to them. They can check it out and visually see what I'm talking about and have a better understanding. And so again, I stumbled upon this. I am, I am not a guy that, if, you, if we were in person right now, I would be like beat red. I'd be stumbling over my words. I do not like to talk in public at all, but talking to a camera is a lot different so I can handle that. But you're gonna see a natural, progression again as those videos come out. I, if you go back and watch some of my first videos, they are, they are horrible. <laughs> but they progressively got better, and I think we're doing a pretty good job now. But uh, they became just the primary way. Bye-bye uh, Craigslist. I don't do that anymore. I haven't done that for a long time. I still have a Facebook page, which is a great way to connect. But YouTube, it's the preferred platform to educate and entertain. And for me, it's a very natural fit. Um, it's an easy way to showcase the equipment that I sell, to highlight problems that I have with equipment or solutions on how to fix that, you know, to show projects that are going on. There's just so many things and so many ways you can communicate with folks that for me, it's become my primary source of marketing. Okay, so the cool thing about that, right, I was going somewhere with this, I get off track, is now I make money on YouTube, right? And so I know everybody wants to know, how much money are you making? And I'm not gonna share that with you because that number fluctuates, it changes constantly based on your views, based on view durations, all sorts of metrics that YouTube will tell you, this, this is why you're made this much, this is why you had this many views. None of it adds up to me, it doesn't make any sense. It's all over the map. But the point is, is that, for the first 300 and some videos that I made, I did all of that work myself. And it it just flat out burnt me out. I mean, I had no interest in making more videos. They were very helpful and, and educational. And I think that my audience appreciated them, but it's like another full-time job to do that. And so for me, what I did is I took that money that I was making off of YouTube and I hired my first employee, my brother right behind the camera right there to film me, to edit those videos, to upload them, to do all that kind of stuff for me with the idea that the channel is going to continue to grow. You know, it'll recoup it. It's my marketing investment for the rest of my company. And so as far as the money coming in off of YouTube, I put every dollar right back into the business. For me, I'm about making money off of the tractors, the attachments, all the other equipment that I sell. That's how I support my business. So the world of YouTube opens up a lot of possibilities, a lot of doors, a lot of different opportunities. You need to be aware of them. And so for me, one of the videos that I made a long time ago was replacing some halogen light bulbs in one of my tractors with some LED bulbs that I bought off of Amazon. And so I ended up, I don't remember how, but maybe just randomly stumbling across the Amazon affiliate program where basically where I bought those light bulbs from right off of Amazon, I could create an affiliate account with them and Essentially, if people use my link to buy those light bulbs, then I would make a, a certain amount off of that purchase. And so I think it's maybe 3%, it's not a lot. Like on a $25 purchase on a light bulb set, you're making less than a buck, right? So you're not getting rich off of this, but it's laying the foundation, it's opening another opportunity. Once you can scale that and get all sorts of different products that are out there, you know, that you would use. And, and I'm not much for shilling things that I wouldn't use, that I wouldn't stand by. That's, that's not really my thing. These are all products that I would use or have used, or I know a lot of other folks do that have been around for a long time and have been proven out. But the great thing about these affiliate products, which is gonna be the fourth revenue stream, is the fact that you don't have to carry any of that inventory. So inventory is a very, very, very expensive part of doing business. And in fact, it's the most expensive, um, or the biggest cost that I have on a regular basis. And so I love, opportunities when I don't have to physically buy inventory and touch it and deal with it and ship it back out. If I can just have a link, you go somewhere else to buy it, that works great for me. And so for me, I do use a decent amount of affiliate links and I, I post those in video descriptions. I have links to them on my website. 
And again, you just create an account and it just gives you a, a special link with your kind of your code embedded in it so that if, if folks buy through that link, then you're gonna get a commission. And so I do that with a handful of sites, not a ton. The big ones that jump out besides Amazon are gonna be um, uh, palletforks.com, which they use a third party system called Commission Junction. And so if, you know, I really like uh, the ballast box at palletforks.com Titan, uh, the one that they offer, I think it's the best value that's out there right now. So I have links on my website to where you can go through and buy that because I recommend it. And so if you go through the links and buy that product, I'm gonna get a commission and they're gonna ship it right to you. Now, somewhat related, but what I call the fifth revenue stream is gonna be what I affectionately refer to as my GWT discount club. And so this is gonna be a specific set of vendors, you know, and this could be, you can see uh, the boxes back there, Tractor Matt, that's our newest GWT discount club member, but they are gonna be their own manufacturer, their own company. And for me, again, this is about at some point managing my inventory and managing the amount of employees that I need because if you get to having so much inventory, you gotta have more people to answer the phone, answer emails, process orders, you know, plus the cash to hold that inventory. So there's a lot of these products that just make more sense for me as, as my own company to work, work out a partnership with these other manufacturers to use a discount code, which is GWT, where you can buy something like the Tractor Med on their website you can save 5% typically, sometimes more, that's totally up to the manufacturer and what they wanna do. And then they're gonna be able to track all those sales that come through typically on a monthly basis using code GWT, and they can send me a commission based off of the sales that I generated. And so for me, this is again, a bit of an evolution, right? These things just, they happen and evolve because I tie it back to YouTube where it's really opened up a lot of windows and you get so many eyeballs, we're at about 23, 24 million views, I think, total on our channel. So that's not 24 million different people, but it's it's millions of different people that have seen our channel and talked about us and um, maybe sent our information to different manufacturers. And sometimes they'll reach out to us, sometimes we'll reach out to them. And so I think we have 15 or 16 different vendors in that discount club now, which it's not like it's, there's no cost. You know, we, we just kind of call it a discount club just for fun. but. They're right on our website. You can just go right there. You're gonna see the links to get to those manufacturers' websites where you can place your orders. The point being, this is not replacing selling tractors or attachments, but it's, it's supplementing, okay? And so you wanna do things that are not gonna take up a lot of your time. You only have so much time in the day. And for me, my time is spread too thin as it is. And so if I can still generate some additional sales on products that I like, that I use, that I think that other folks would enjoy as well and work well with tractors and other equipment, then this is a good way to do that. This keeps my cost down, my overhead down, my investment down. And at the same time, I am gonna make less money. Typically, I'm not gonna make as much money or as much commission on something that a manufacturer is selling directly versus a product that I'm carrying but it's a trade-off, there's only so much time in the day. But for the most part, since I do wanna semi-limit my inventory, these are products that I otherwise would not sell at all and make any money off of. So income stream number six is gonna be channel sponsorship, and that was something that we had for the first time in 2021. You might have noticed if you are a longtime viewer that uh, there was six months, seven months of videos that all started with we are proud to be sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. And so that was our first go at having a channel sponsor, all right? Just somebody that we mentioned that uh, we stood behind, that we felt was a really good value, that had a wide reach to a huge portion of our audience, and that went really well. And to be perfectly honest, we're kind of in the midst of if we do re-sign with them or not, and we don't want you guys to get burnt out. You know, this was a new idea. You know, <laughs> we're not professionals doing this. These are just ideas that we come up with. We try them out, we see how they go, and then maybe we keep them and maybe we don't. But the point is that all these other little revenue streams can really start to add up and make a difference as a sum total. They're not gonna replace the meat and potatoes and you don't wanna let it distract you from that as well. These need to be complementary ways that you can make additional revenue for yourself and for your company. You know, if, if taking on a channel sponsor, for example, was going to require me to invest a lot of my time into it just to make a little bit of extra money, that's not gonna be worth it to me. But this leads me to one revenue stream that I have really started to let dwindle away over the last two or three years, and it's because it's very time consuming. And so for me, I used to take on a lot of service projects and I am blessed and fortunate to have all that equipment to do service projects. So brush hogging and tilling, you know, putting in food plots, grading, all sorts of different things. And I really just don't have time for it anymore. And it, it get to a point when you have to make those tough decisions and so for me it got to the point where it just wasn't worth the time and the effort you know 
it's a pretty competitive market out there and you can definitely make money doing it. I don't want to discourage you guys if that's if that's your goal, if that's your dream, but for me with the equipment and with the uh, the attachment sales, it was just a lot lower on the totem pole. There was just so much. I answer typically 200 to 300 emails a day overall, um, as many phone calls as I can get to as well, on top of doing everything else that I do. So I just don't have more time in the day and something had to give and so the service projects had to go. Okay, and so now there is one revenue stream that I really haven't taken advantage of and I don't think that it's gonna break the bank either way, but for me, I'm not, really big on having merchandise out there. I do have a lot of folks that request it. You know, they want hats or shirts or some other swag, whatever it is that they can get. But um, part of that's a lack of time, right? That's always lowest priority. And, and number two, I don't know how I feel about having somebody pay to wear my brand or anything to do with my company. I, I, I feel like that's a little bit awkward for me and um, I'm very appreciative that they want to do that. Uh, but for me, it's a little strange. All right, well, that gives you a look at the six different ways that I do make money with my company. One that I've chosen not to any longer and another one that I'm just not sure I want to do. And I think it's worth noting that as you naturally progress and build your business from a startup, you're going to have these opportunities just kind of come, right? They're just going to naturally fall into place. And some of them you you need to kind of help push along and others are just gonna naturally happen. But the biggest thing for me that, that I think that you need to focus on as well is, is don't forget about what's paying the bills, right? What got you started, which is gonna be for me, uh, the tractors and the attachments, that's the heart of the business and what makes it all tick. Time management is gonna become key because there's only so much time in the day, there's nothing we can do about that. And, and if you're, well, I, I use myself as an example, right? There's certain things where I just wish I wouldn't have done, things that maybe, maybe I make a dollar doing, you know, and it takes me 10 minutes of back and forth with a customer to explain what it is. That's just not a good use of my time. And, and no offense, I, I like to help people out, but I have to put my time where I can make the most money for myself and for my business. So this is a bit of a different video, but this whole channel is about education, typically on tractors. And I know we have a lot of business owners out there too that have, um, built their business up and retired and sold it off and everything else and you guys have a wealth of knowledge out there me i'm kind of mid-run you know I'm, I'm right in the middle of it i i hope to work this until it's time for me to retire and i can sell it off or or do whatever else happens with it but i'm hoping to make more content like this if you guys enjoy it just kind of give you uh, the lessons learned so i do the same thing with tractors but the pitfalls of business you know different areas and aspects of it whether it's marketing or hiring employees or when to outsource whatever the topic is you know if you guys enjoyed this give me some feedback and let me know i'd love to do some more videos if it makes sense for you but that's going to wrap it up for us today so thanks for watching if you did enjoy it hit that subscribe button below if you do own a tractor you know where to go goodworkstractors.com and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon <music>